For Pride Month, which was in June, one of our listeners, Chrissy, set up a fundraiser for Point Foundation, but she's planning to go ahead and leave it up for the rest of 2021. So please join in and donate if you can. The Point Foundation helps LGBTQ plus students achieve their goals of higher education with financial assistance, mentoring, leadership programming, and more. Your generosity helps Point provide scholarships and vital programs to a new generation of LGBTQ plus leaders. If you'd like to donate, go to our Instagram, Who's the Boss Podcast, and the link is in our bio. It's listed as Chrissy's Pride Foundation. Oh, and there she is now, my precious little snow bunny. <laughs> yeah, that's me, hippity hop. <laughs> <laughs> You two are going to have a blast. 48 hours of non-stop relating. Huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, remember that little conversation we had about me being 16 and going to a ski lodge with my father where there are other 16-year-olds who are not with their fathers? Yes, Sam, I remember, and I promise you, you're going to have plenty of time to do your own thing. Okay, so we're clear on the ground rules. If you meet some kids that you want to hang out with, you're allowed. Hello. Welcome back to... Hey, yo. Oh, hey. The Who's the Boss podcast. I'm I'm Tori. It sounded like you were questioning your OA there. I'm trying to do it like different and then it just never comes out right. It's hard. It's a... It's... Two, it's four dumb it's syllables form. to begin with, and then, yeah, trying to make them different. It's not easy. We are here to rewatch and discuss every single episode of Who's the Boss? Oh. I got a little bit of news. Oh, news. Yes. Judith Light's been cast in something else that's not the Who's the Boss oh. reboot. <laughs> All right. This that is the third right. thing I think we've recently had, right? Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah, so she is joining the cast of a movie called The Menu. It is being shot in Georgia soon, and the summary is a young couple travels to a remote island to eat at an exclusive restaurant Mm. where the chef has prepared a lavish menu with some shocking surprises. It's a dark comedy. You know who it stars is Anya Taylor-Joy, who is the lead actress from uh, Queen's Gambit. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And Ralph Fiennes is also in it. Oh, that sounds good. Yes. So, yeah. That lady is busy. Busy, uh-huh. busy, busy. And what's it going to be on, does it say? Oh, I think it might... I, that, that's a good question, but hmm. I think it may just be in the theater. Oh, If we, oh, if it's we a have movie. theaters, I gotcha. then... But if not, then I don't know which streaming platform will charge you $30 to watch it a week before. <laughs> <laughs> before it goes on right whatever exactly. for free um okay so today we're going to cover episode this is from season five it's episode 14 the title is winter break and it first aired on tuesday february 14th 1989 it's the valentine's day episode oh obviously now technically the show has done a valentine's day episode um remember seasons ago when Mona and um, Samantha were counting their Valentine's cards yeah. and Angela had none. Yeah. I don't even remember what that episode was about. But that was technically a Valentine's one. Okay. This one, not so much. The summary says, Tony and Samantha's father-daughter ski weekend goes downhill. Ah, uh-huh. uh, downhill. When Tony spends all his time with a ski bunny. Angela and Jonathan's mother-son weekend turns into a growth experience for both. A growth experience. <laughs> All uh, right, you're up. I have um, an, an enthusiastic, oh my gosh, I got to start so wait, so wait. As enthusiastic as Tony is about the quality time ski weekend with Sam and Angela about staying behind with Jonathan as unwilling, uh, as unwilling as their kids really are to be shielded as children... I don't even know what I'm reading anymore. No, just words. Sam blows a shot at handsome skier Zach while Tony takes a kid's skiing course with a little foxy instructor, Lisa. (laughs) That's my favorite part of this synopsis. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I skipped a line. Do you want to start over? Oh, put your glasses on. There you go. I don't even know if that's going to help. 
I'm sorry. Tony takes a kid skiing course with the little kids, in, with the little kids including an abusive Amber. Then turns possessively jealous when Tony still scores with Foxy instructor Lisa. That's what it is. Back home, Jonathan hopes to escape. Uh, uh, thanks to Angela's cold, which also decks Mona. Oh. Wow. Wow. But decides against it to take care of Ma and handle the heating repairman better than they ever could. Wow, that one was tough. Yeah, that... I mean, I'm, it also made a real tough one. I missed the line. I'm exhausted. I'm sorry. Um, is, that the, is that it? Are we but done? But Tony didn't score with anyone. I mean, I guess he scored some points I'll with tell her. this person who wrote this. <laughs> okay, so when this episode opens... Tony is skiing down the stairs of the house, and he's like swooshing back and forth, holding his little poles. Um, oh, ski poles. Like only, <laughs> only like only Tony could. Exactly, and Angela's like, "Ooh, nice form," and he says, "Thanks, but how did I ski?" Mm. Uh, and she's like, uh, "That's what that was exactly what she said too." Uh. All right. And then she kind of walks away, and it looks like he's teasing the back of her leg with one of the poles, and she kind of turns around and, and like, laughs at him again or right. something, or, like, she, she caught him doing something. Mm-hmm. So they're being very flirty. Yeah. It's a very flirty beginning of the episode here. we got to add with these little... We're getting these little tiny doses of flirtiness in these episodes that don't really have anything to do with them. Right. So he yells up to the stairs, Samantha, come on, I want to get to Vermont before it closes. <laughs> very, another very Tony yes. line. And then Jonathan comes into the kitchen, and he kind of no, looks literally. over at Jonathan, and then he looks at Angela, and he's like, are you sure that you're going to be all right this weekend all by yourself? And Angela looks at Jonathan and says, I am really excited to spend the weekend with my little fella. Little fella. Yeah, and she's rubbing his arms. And he's like, Mom, can we get cut it out with the little fella stuff? She's like, sure, sweetie. So she has the whole weekend planned. They're going to go to museums. They're going to go to a petting zoo. Mm. They're going to go to Bloomies, and maybe she'll buy him an outfit. A little outfit. Yeah. So he runs over to Tony, and he's like, $20 if you stay, $30 if you take me with you. Mm-hmm. That's. I mean, he really needed to up that. I know. Quite a bit. That's true. Where, but yeah. you know he's got it. You know he's he good does. for it. Yeah, he's got way more than that. Tony says, sorry, pal, this is my big weekend with my little girl. So this is an interesting um, aspect of this family dynamic here, because even though they very much live as a family, they're not. So he's going on a trip with just his daughter, and Jonathan's staying home with his mom. Yeah, I mean, they're technically... Yeah, not I mean they're not a family. They're not so, a family, yeah. And it makes sense. It does. Like he wants to spend some quality time with just Samantha. He just spent quality time with just Angela and that went well. Like if this was a true step parent, step child situation, then I think it would be different. But even though Tony and Jonathan have gotten as close as they are, he's really just gonna go spend time with his daughter. Sam comes down the stairs just then and he's like, Oh, there's my little snow bunny now. <laughs> And she says, yep, that's me, hippity hop. She's not as excited about this trip as he is. No. We get that impression right off the bat. But Angela says, you guys are going to have a blast. And Tony says, yes, we've got 48 hours of nonstop bonding time. 48 hours only? I know, that's pretty. All right, so you're going to drive there for six hours, unless that's including the drive time. Hmm. I really think they're only there for one night. Oh, really? It seems like it. Okay, so I don't, I'm not sure, though. Actually, if they're leaving now, maybe they if get there. it's 48 there. hours, no, it's No, no, you're nights. right. You're right. So they are getting there at night. They're going to stay over, and then the next day, they're going to ski all day, spend the night, and, and then, then the leave. next day, they're going to come home. All right. It's 48 hours. You're right. You're right. Okay. She says, hey, Dad, do you remember the conversation where we talked about the fact that I'm a 16-year-old going on a trip with her dad to a place where there will be other 16-year-olds not on a trip with their dad? Mm-hmm. And she said, what are the ground rules? And he's like, yes, I get it. If you meet some kids that you want to hang out with, you're allowed. But they only have 48 hours. Right. Yeah. Right. So she, and a lot of them, if it's 16-year-olds, are probably there with their parents. So. I know. It's not like this place is going to be overrun with 16-year-olds just hanging out all by themselves. Right then, Mona comes in the back door, yep. and she says, she sees Tony, and she says, oh, good, you're still here. You can fix me dinner. Yeah, why don't you, you know what? 
go you know what to yourself <laughs> and angela gets up she's like they're about to leave and i and then she just sneezes right in mona's face yeah and mona's like whoa 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 hang on watch where you point that thing when it's loaded mm-hmm. i don't want you to get me sick and angela's like oh calm down i just sneezed and even Tony's like, yeah, yeah, Mona, I'm sure she just sneezed. And then he says to Samantha, let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny watching people be sick now. I know. Like, just the thought of being around anyone who has a cold at this point just seems so bizarre to me. I and know. like Run and hide. Run it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Put your mask on and get the hell out of there. Go stay in Mona's apartment for the... Or actually, Mona, no, just go home. Mona, go home. Go stay, Mona. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. Don't you think Mona just would have left at that point? Yeah. <laughs> well, but I know. Maybe she's going to risk getting sick just to have dinner because she's not going to make it herself. She's hungry. So right before they leave, Tony's like, oh, I forgot something. And he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out two little red beanies. Is that what those are? Yeah. Little ski caps? Sure. Yeah. And he puts it, one on Sam's head that says kid, and then he puts one on his head that says dad. I mean, how much more embarrassing can that I be know. for a 16-year-old? <laughs> and then he's all squeezing her and giving her little kisses on the cheek, and she looks like she wants to run away. So now they're in the car on the way to Vermont. So let's not forget, they have a six-hour drive. And they're driving this... There's a good chance that they could have just died in the snow in the middle of the night when this van broke down <laughs> and there was no one around to help them I know. and they froze to death i don't think i would trust that van to go six hours anywhere why does it look red i thought it was blue i think it's rust oh. it's like the it's like lights <laughs> bouncing off the rust oh, okay. but yeah because it is blue shining off the rust all nice and Tony's trying to play license plate games with her. So he's, I don't even know what game this is that he's playing, honestly. But he like... I think it, yeah, I don't know. Like, you got to find the four, like, out-of-state plate or something? I don't know. Yeah, he says, Michigan plate, that makes it 10 to nothing. Well, it's 10 to nothing, Tony, because she's not playing. Yeah, I think it's like out-of-state plates or something. Okay. She's just sitting there reading a magazine. Right, and then she's like, well, does that mean you won? Like, right, she's yeah. Done. <laughs> and he says, No, we're playing to 20. And she's like, Oh, okay. And then she still keeps reading her magazine, which you pointed out if this was today, she'd be holding a phone. It'd be a phone. Yeah. yeah. How is she even reading that magazine in the dark car? You would need some sort of light. Tony says, I made peanut butter sandwiches, peanut butter and marshmallow fluff in the cooler if you want to grab mm. one. Also known as Fluffer Nutter. I really want one of those now. Yeah. Have you ever had one? Oh, of course. Oh, I, I don't think I have. Really? All right. I'm not a... You're not a big sweets like person. Marsh, well, I don't like... You don't like marshmallows? No. Oh, my God. How are we married? You know okay. that. No, no, I do. You know what? And Isla didn't like... Our daughter didn't like marshmallows for a while, but I feel like now she's come around. Meanwhile, the little one could eat them right out of the bag. I know. I know. <laughs> well, they like s'mores. They do like s'mores, yeah. But even Isla didn't like s'mores for a while. No, she didn't. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, where was I? She. Oh, so then Samantha says, no, too many calories. And it just makes me sad that she's already counting calories mm-hmm. at this point because she's 16. And just because we hear that all the time. And that's just what we're trained to do, I guess. So she's at first saying that she's not going to have any because there's too many calories. And he's trying to get her. He's like, are you sure it's calling your name? I mean, you're going to be skiing this weekend. Just shut up and eat the sandwich. Eat the fluff for nutters. Yeah. (laughs) So she gives in and she eats it and it tastes delicious and it reminds her of her childhood and she's starting to come around. Then he's like, you know what else I have to wash it down with? A little chocolate milk made with Bosco. Bosco. Yeah. So I'm not really familiar with Bosco. And the, the only brand. reason I am is from Seinfeld. Okay. Yeah, I don't really know that reference. But our kids have those mini brands, and one of their mini brands is, is Bosco. like Bosco chocolate Bosco syrup. Is, um, yeah, I think it's more East Coast, North. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I just remember Hershey's chocolate syrup I know, I did kid. too, but I, Bosco was a thing. Bosco hmm. syrup, I guess. Um, I just know of Seinfeld is actually an episode that revolves around. <laughs> It's George Costanza's ATM code as Bosco. And he doesn't want to tell anybody. <laughs> and then he ends up having to tell the guy because the 
<laughs> the only way he can get in is get out is to use the ATM co- card with the code because yeah. the, the bank's on fire. <laughs> I know it's kind of a ridiculous <laughs> episode. All right, so she's like, oh, all right, and then she gives in. And... Bosco's from New Jersey, by the way. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. So then she pours the Bosco. She starts drinking that. Now Tony's singing some song, and she doesn't want to get in on the song either. But then she starts singing along, and the next thing you know, she's picking out out out-of-state license plates. So now she's fully on board, and they're having a great time. That's right. They're not even there yet. Cut to the next morning. No, what a mess. I know. Jonathan's in the kitchen. I, does he have food or is he just waiting for someone to feed him? I don't oh, know. No, he got himself some food. He made oatmeal and he's got orange juice. Oh, okay, good. And Angela comes in and she is clearly sick. She has some sort of cold. Her hair's all messy. She's all stuffy she's sounding. Dressed up. I know, she did. She got dressed. And these are her weekend clothes. I know. Weekend clothes. Yeah, pleated pants with a belt, like a long sleeve kind of sweater shirt. Those are her weekend clothes. And Jonathan's like, Mommy, you don't sound good. And she says, Oh, it's nothing. It's just a little morning phlegm. <laughs> nothing a little orange juice can't uh, clear out. So she goes to the refrigerator, gets out the orange juice, and then she gets a glass down. But before she even fills up the glass, she just starts drinking straight out of the orange juice. I know. What's that all about? I don't know. I think she's realizing that she's sick, but she's like, you know what? I'm going to power through this because we're going to have our weekend. Jonathan says, no, you should go back to bed. And But Angela doesn't want to ruin their special day. She's like, I wouldn't think of it. And then she's just like choking and coughing. Judith Light does a really good job playing. Like, how do you do that? Make yourself talk like you're stuffed up like know. that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they teach it in fancy acting schools. <laughs> fancy acting schools. <laughs> but she schools. does a great job because I would believe that she's really sick. And Jonathan's like, no, you know, what if we go to the petting zoo and then you get all the little bunnies sick and then they're coughing up phlegm. Mm. Poor bunnies. <laughs> but Angela doesn't want to disappoint him. But Jonathan wants out of this, so he doesn't care. He's like, any way that this cannot happen, I don't have to hang out with my mom all weekend, would be fantastic. So she gives in and she's like, yeah, you're, you're right. I should probably stay home and rest. So he's excited and he runs off. Now Mona comes in. She's also coughing and sneezing. She looks at Angela drinking straight out of the carton and she says, this is why I'm sick. (laughs) What did you do last night? Lick the roast? So at the end of the day, Mona had somebody make dinner for her and it was Angela. So she would rather eat. So you get what you pay for. (laughs) Right. She would rather eat Angela's cooking than to just make her own damn dinner Uh, in her own apartment. Yes. Now, Tony and Samantha are having a better time where they are. They're getting ready to go skiing. They're all dressed up in the kid and the dad. <laughs> no hats. I know. Like it's, It really is amazing that she would agree to wear that hat. Do you think that one of our... I don't think... I mean, the little one, yes. But I don't think our older daughter even now would wear a hat yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't think so. And she's not 16 yet. She's only 10. 11. Oh, right. Crap. Yeah, she's 11. So they come outside of the ski lodge and their skis are over to the side. So when I first watched this or started watching this episode, I didn't realize that Tony doesn't actually know how to ski. I guess I just figured right. that he had learned. I mean, he came swishing down the stairs like right. he knew what the and hell he was doing. Right, and you just think Tony knows how to do everything. Right, so that's true. Why would he not know how to ski? So Sam's like, are you sure that you know what to do here? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. And then he says, which one goes on which foot? And she's like, well, the one with an L goes on the left foot, and the one with an R goes on the right foot. So she starts helping him, and she's helping him step in, like get his legs all locked in. And if you look in the background, there's a young guy with his friends. Creeping around. Right, and he's looking over, and he's seeing, he sees Samantha, and she's caught his eye. So he's kind of just standing back there looking at her a little bit. As Sam's helping him get his feet in, she's like, the right foot goes there, the left foot goes there. So then Tony starts singing the hokey pokey. But he does it wrong. He yeah, says, he does. You, you turn yourself about, that's what it's all about. But it's, yeah. you turn yourself around. Right. But they weren't going to do, do no, that over just because he got the hokey pokey wrong. And so <laughs> Sam's like, oh, that's, that's, that's funny, Dad. Okay. So she's trying to show him another move. She's like, let me show you this. You crouch down, you tuck your poles under. Then she pulls his hat down over his face and starts hitting him with her hat and saying, don't ever do mm-hmm. the hokey pokey again. But she's not really embarrassed. Like, she's kind of giggling with him and having a good time. 
and the kid who's ca- who she caught his eye, he's come over again to kind of see what's going on here, and then he walks back away. So I don't know if they were just like trying to show that he's. I don't know. Were we supposed to get the point? I guess that this kid's looking at her. But it does just yeah. seem kind of, kind of funny. Yeah, and then, yeah, like he's kind of like, what's going on here? But also checking her out. Right, yeah. And then he's like probably thinking like, oh, is, she, is that her dad? Who is she with? And then wanders back over to where he is. So the, she, Sam's like, all right, we're here to ski. Let's get going. And then she says to him, don't you think that maybe you should take a lesson? And he's like, what do you mean a lesson? I was a professional athlete. I'm a natural at sports. And then he falls right over. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I was just testing the snow. And he yells, it's ready. Okay. So Tony. <laughs> so then he's like, okay, maybe just a little refresher course. All right, so maybe Tony's been skiing before, but he just hasn't done it in a long yeah, time. Yeah, kind of like, forgot. Yeah, how much skiing do you do when you live in Brooklyn? And I mean, it's not <laughs> like... <laughs> I mean, I guess you are sort of close to skiing, but yeah. Yeah, but like his... the From... What we get of his life, he wasn't... Skiing, to me, seems like a pretty... A sport for wealthy people. Because yeah. it costs a lot to go skiing. Yeah. And so I don't see how, if he was a poor kid from Brooklyn that didn't have very many chances at doing stuff, he wasn't going skiing often. But maybe as he's gotten older or something, he's gone a few times. That's All true. Right. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. No. So she's like, okay, you go do your lesson. I'll get a couple of runs in. And then afterwards, we'll spend the whole afternoon together. And Tony's like, great, we'll do some tobogganing. We'll get some lunch. And he's excited. So they split up for this little bit. <laughs> what? <laughs> he's, trying to, he's trying to walk away, but he's on his skis and he can't. So oh, right. Like, and then she, she just pushes, pushes him. Yeah. So as soon as Tony's out of the way, this kid moves in fast. So his name is Zach. And the actor's name is David Colby. And I don't know. I couldn't really find anything that he... Oh, really? I was wondering. Oh, no. Two things. That's it. He was... Oh, he's never really... Yeah. He was Zach on Who's the Boss, and he was kid number three in Less Than Zero. Less Than Zero? Yeah, I don't know. The movie? I think so. But, I mean, he was kid number three. No, I know, but, um, yeah, it is the movie. Yeah, and his, his... they're out of order here because it says, oh, no, I see. This is known for. He's actually more known for kid number three than who's the boss. Okay. So, yes, not, not, a, he does look recognizable, though, to me. But I don't know if it's just because I've seen this episode a lot, maybe as a kid or something. Yeah, so that's maybe. Why. So he comes over and he's like, oh, hi. So he starts talking to her and then he, he's kind of like, I don't know, tripping over his words. He's more nervous than he wants to be here. And he's trying to ask if she would like to go on a ski run with him. And he's like, oh, you know, I'm not doing a very good job talking here. And she's like, no, no, I think it's cute. So they go off together. Now, Tony has arrived at his ski class, which is him and then like four, five, six, and (laughs) (laughs) seven-year-olds. And the ski instructor, instructor comes over. Now, this lady is recognizable and for a reason. Her name is Leanne Hunley. Okay, yeah. And she's most recognizable, I would say, for playing um, Anna Demera or Anna Fredericks on Days of Our Lives. Yeah. Looks like she was in 657, 657 episodes. I know. She's in Raising Hope, too. Yeah. One she's episode one episode. Of, you know, Judith Light's in an episode of Raising Hope. Oh, is that right? Yes. Just um, Shoot Me. She's in a lot of stuff. Oh, nine episodes of Dawson's Creek. Yeah, so she's definitely a recognizable face. Oh, she was on quite a bit of Dynasty. Lois and Clark. New oh, really? Who'd she play in that? Uh, Designing Women? Emily Channing. Mm. Yeah, if I saw the episode, I'd probably remember. Okay, I, where did we just find that that's streaming? Because I need to go down a HBO. rabbit hole with that show. Okay, yes. It's HBO, and they look all remastered, so they look Yeah, good. they look nice. I had such a crush on uh, Dean Cain. Okay, anyway. Anywho. Yeah, where were we? Okay, so the instructor shows up, and she sees Tony standing there with all these kids. And she's like, oh, sir, you don't have to stay with your child. You can go. I promise that your little one will be very safe here. (laughs) (laughs) And he says, oh, I'm actually the little one. And then she's like, oh, okay. So then she's talking about the bunny slope, and he's like, wait a minute. I got to go down on something called a bunny slope. Yeah, the bunny slope. And this little one little girl's like, yeah, you got something wrong with that? Immediately, this girl does not like him. I know, fighting. 
Her name is Amber, and uh, the actress's name is Jamie Lynn Grenham. Grenham? Mm. I'm not sure. But I, um, I, when I looked her up, I believe... Oh, no. She was on Step by Step, but just a few things here and there, and oh, she hasn't step acted since 1994. I watched Step by Step. Yeah? Wasn't that with um, Patrick oh, Duffy and, yes. L- and Suzanne, Suzanne Su- Summers? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was to watch that show. Yeah, but she's only in two episodes, so she wasn't one of the there main kids. There couldn't be more than one or two seasons of that, right? No, I feel... I don't step know. Step Hang on, on now I gotta look. Let's I need see. to know, too. Let me click on it. I just I remember... Feel like I feel like it was seasons. on longer than that. Huh. It was part of the Friday night... Um, Oh, seven seasons. Nineteen, yeah, yes, long. nineteen, almost as long as Who's the Boss. Wow, wow. Oh, and realize. the girl from My Two Dads. It's probably again. Once again, I stopped watching. Yeah, I used to love My Two Dads also. And I'm sorry, I'm going to mention this. I just got. Okay, so Adam, who we've had on the show twice, wrote a really touching tribute to Ed Asner. Mm. Um, that I I posted his instagram link in one of our stories so that you could follow the link to get there to read it but it was on medium uh anyway but in the tribute to ed asner he talked about how he had recently been fired from an acting role on my two dads and now i really want to know that story oh yeah yeah so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to message him and see if he'll just make a recording of that story because that sounds interesting yeah what did he do (laughs) he probably didn't do anything but i just wonder what the politics were there okay Anyway, back to where we were. So this little girl's like already yelling at Tony about him having a problem with them going on the bunny slope. Now the teacher's like, okay, first thing we're going to do is learn how to turn around. She yells at him and doesn't he come back at her? I I don't think he does right here. Wait, hang on my seat. No, he just looks at her. Oh, okay. Yeah, but they get into it. They certainly do. So then the teacher's like, okay, first thing we're going to learn is how to turn around and she puts her ski up, and then she like you put your leg down 180 degrees. Anyway, Tony tries to do it, and he knocks every child over. I know. <laughs> now you also brought up the fact that these sets are pretty extensive for them. Yeah. Yes, this episode had it cost a lot more money than they normally do. I mean, it's a big soundstage with a lot of like fake snow. Yeah. And, and they then have some kind of mountain situation. Yeah, they have Hills. this view, then they have the lodge view, which they're probably yeah. right next to each other, but still. Uh, yeah, pretty, and all these fake trees and stuff, and then you can totally tell that that background is just like a painted backdrop. Yeah, but what do you want? No, I know. I'd always loved how, that's the thing with sitcoms, like they're never truly outside, and then when they are really outside, I know, it's, it's so, so jarring. Different. I know. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, he knocks every child over when he when he tries to turn around because they really are standing way too close to each other to try something like that, I but know. it makes it funny. But also, I wonder how many times they had to do that with all of those kids. Yeah, to get them to fall. Yeah, at the right time. <laughs> so the kids start yelling at him, and um, <laughs> Amber says, watch it, you big stupid head. I know. Stupid head. Uh, and Tony's like, sorry, it was an accident. So now he starts getting into it with this little girl. And she's like, oh, yeah. And he says, oh, yeah. You stuff it. She told him to stuff it. <laughs> and then he said, oh, yeah. And then the teacher says, children. Right. <laughs> so she's like, all right, maybe stuff we should move it. on to something else. Lisa, the instructor, says, let's move on to the sidestep. And Amber, the little girl, is like, oh, I'm good at that. And, he, and Tony's like, big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Again, and then picking he's like, a fight with a girl. I know, a little a, a girl. Small child. <laughs> and then he he asks her, "Can you hit a hanging curveball?" And she says, "Better than you can ski." Mm. And then they're yelling at each other. And then Tony just goes, "I hate you." <laughs> yeah. Well, first he says, "Why? What I? Why I oughta?" And then she says, "You and what army?" Oh yeah, yeah. So like, first he threatens to assault her. Right. Then he says, "I hate you." Right. You have to get it right. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Why I ought to punch you in the face. Uh, Yeah, it's just threatening a child. I know. (laughs) And then this lady is still kind of into Tony after seeing that. The the instructor. Okay, so... I know, after she... uh, Yeah, saw saw him threatening a kid. So now Lisa's like, okay, well, let's try stepping into our skis. She's trying to show them how to 
sidestep up the mountain or up the hill here. And that, by the way, the Why I Oughta is a um, Three Stooges thing. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. I thought it was a cartoon, but yeah, that. Makes well, sense. it's cartoon. I think it was in both, but I know it's in Three Stooges. Why I Oughta. Yeah, I hated the Three Stooges. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a. I couldn't get to the remote fast enough if that ever came on. Oh, really? We watched that. We watched, watched a lot in our house. Really? Yeah, it seems like a boy thing. Mm. Anyway, Tony starts sliding down the hill as he's trying to sidestep up it. And the, you just see him kind of slide out of frame. And then the tea instructor's like, fall down, fall down. Mm-hmm. And he does. And she says, perfect. <laughs> now they cut to Angela and Mona, who are at home and miserable. <laughs> So they're both sitting on the couch, sneezing, coughing, fighting over a blanket. Mona's spraying Lysol everywhere Mm. at Angela when she sneezes or coughs. Why don't you leave, Mona? Go home. Right? Go to your own place. And look at this ridiculous blanket that has like cows and tulips on it. I know. And there's there's only one blanket in the whole house? Right. Yes. Absolutely. (sighs) No other blankets anywhere that they could use. Jonathan comes downstairs and he's running out the front door. And Angela's like, whoa, whoa, where are you going? And he's like, me and -and so-and-so, I can't remember, are going to New York City. Ty and I. Oh, Ty, okay. Whoever Ty is. Are going to New York City. And Angela says, you are not going going to New York City by yourselves. And Mona says, oh, Angela, when you were seven years old, I used to let you wander around New York City by yourself. And then you found the car and we had to take you back Mm -hmm. home. (laughs) <laughs> so they basically tried to make Angela an orphan. I know. They were like, we don't know what's going to happen to you. We're but leaving. We're leaving. Yeah. And Angela just gives her a look. And then she says, Jonathan is 13 years old. He is a child. And he says, I am not a child. I am a teenager. And if I lived in the Ozarks, I'd be married to my cousin by now. Hmm. It's got a point there. <laughs> I mean, the fact that he's a teenager, I don't know if he's married to his cousin. <laughs> I don't understand that reference. I don't but either. We're just gonna move on. And they probably don't want to understand it. Probably not. But he, I understand what the point he's making is. There was a time when kids were considered adults at a much younger age than they are now, and married off, and or had to fend for themselves. So Angela's like, "Well, now you're definitely not going to New York." And then Jonathan says, "Great balls of fire, Mom! You never let me do anything." And he runs upstairs. What the hell was that? I don't know. It's the worst comeback ever. I know. It's pretty bad. <laughs> then Mona says, and there was a time when you were eight years old and we left you in the mountains. And then Angela steals the one blanket from her. I bet that Judith Light and Catherine Hellman had a lot of fun shooting those scenes. Oh, yeah. Because they are both getting to pretend like they're sick and just act ridiculous. So now we cut back to Tony and he's at the tail end of his first lesson. He's all done. And the teacher's like, okay, we'll keep, you know, practicing and good luck out there. And as the little Amber girl is walking away, (laughs) he yells, Mm. don't run into any trees. And she says, don't worry, we know how to ski. And she leaves. Wow. Yeah. Funny he should say that. Don't run into any trees. Oh, God. Because it didn't he Tony Danza was actually in an accident where he ran into a tree. Yes. (laughs) A skiing accident. That is that is awful. But yes, he was. He was. I don't know much about it, but I know that he it looked, didn't look good for a bit, and then yeah, he says, made a full well, recovery. While he was skiing in Utah's Deer Valley, he impacted a tree at high speed, which that's I mean that's what killed um, Sonny Bono. Sonny Bono. Mm-hmm. Um, the accident that happened more than two decades ago, which um, this was in 2017. Uh, left the TV star in critical condition for a month. On December 28, 1992, he suffered a punctured lung, six broken ribs, and a broken vertebrae in his back as a result of his accident. My God, that must have been this. It must have happened right after Who's the Boss ended, because I yeah. think it ended in 92. Yeah, it says December 28th. And he probably okay, went so on a yeah. big skiing trip right when the show ended. Yeah, like I think the, I think the last episode aired in April of that year. So, it yeah. was that same so anyway. Year. Yeah, that is really scary. I didn't, I don't remember hearing anything about that at the time. No, I don't either. But in 1992, I was probably way too wrapped up in myself to care about anything. Right, and you didn't have social media. <laughs> yeah, or, news was hard. Interwebs, like, no would interwebs. Have had to catch it it's on like the you would have had to catch news, it or not. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I saw something about it in one of the E True Hollywood stories that we watched. So yeah, so Tony now is um, trying to flirt with this lady here. 
So Lisa comes over and she's like, you know, you really did a great, <laughs> she's like, you really did a great job coming to the bunny slope and like showing that you're vulnerable. No, lady, he fought with children the whole time he was there and acted like a complete jerk. Yeah, pretty much. But that's not at all what she saw. <laughs> She's like, you know, a lot of guys wouldn't do that. They'd be way too macho to go on the bunny slope. You really showed vulnerability. Okay. And it was great how you were able to ask for help. And then he's like, oh, um, can I have some help? Because my ski's actually stuck and I can't get it off. <laughs> so she's helping him. Now we cut to Samantha and uh, Zach, who've just gone on a few runs together and had a good time. He asks her if she'd like to go do some more skiing together. And she says, oh, you know, I would love to, but I can't because I promised my dad that we were going to spend the afternoon together and go tobogganing. Mm. And Zach's like, you're dead. <laughs> You know, he ain't having it. Zach's apparently there with some friends, 16 years old, and staying in hotels all by themselves. Yes. And Sam says, yeah, you know, he's a lot of fun, and he planned this whole weekend so that we could spend some time together. And then Zach's like, okay, well, you know, if you just change your mind or whatever, I'll be in um, warming warming room three or something. Warming hut three. Oh, hut. Whatever That's right. that is. And then he's like, no, maybe two. He's back to being a bumbling fool. And then he just skis away. So Sam puts her little kid hat back on, and she goes to look for Tony. But then Tony comes up with Lisa, and he's like, hey, listen, you know, you're, you're out of, you're in luck. You have a free afternoon because Lisa's offered to take me on a few, uh, take me tobogganing and hang out for a while. Tobogganing run after she pre-promised to go with her. I know. But he thinks he's doing Sam a favor. Right. Because he figures she wants to hang out with her friends, and that's what Sam thought she wanted until her dad is now not available and actually found someone else to hang out with. So I guess it was it would have been fine if she had found people, but since he's the one actually ditching her, she's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought we were going to spend time yeah, right. together. But she was really getting into this idea, like on the way there. Like I think, you know, she told Luke to, it's not even uh, Luke, who's Luke? Zach. Know. It wasn't even like she was going to try. Use the force. <laughs> she was going to try to see if Tony would let her hang out with him, unless she just didn't like Zach that much. So now a, a little kid comes up to her, and he's like, you want to go skiing? And she's like, sure, why not? So she goes skiing with him instead. Now a later, child. Yes. <laughs> later that night, they're sitting in the ski lodge, like, restaurant area. He's with Sam, and he's telling her all... Tony's telling her all the things that happened today while he was with Lisa. About the tobogganing run. And I love how someone walks by with a, a leg in a full cast. No, I know. Like, what happened? <laughs> yeah. That person did not have a good time skiing at no. all. And so he's like, yeah, I was hurtling 60 miles an hour down the hill and he was talking about oh and again he's talking about a tree in front of him and he saw his life flash before his eyes and he also mm. saw her life her life flash before his eyes and angela's and mona's and then he goes mona's was pretty good <laughs> <laughs> sam says dad i'm really surprised that you enjoy tobogganing better than skiing and Tony says, well, Lisa says I have a brighter future as a human projectile. <laughs> <Zing>. <laughs> <That's>, yeah, <laughs> Sam's tired of hearing about Lisa. So she stands up. And she's like, I'm really getting hungry. Let's go. So they go and sit down at the table. But as they move into the dining room, Tony sees Lisa. Mm. And he's like, oh, oh, it's Lisa. So they go over to her table. And he says, are you here with friends? And she says, oh, no, you know, I'm dining alone tonight. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. Come on over. Come sit with us. And he says, is it OK with you, Sam? And she's like, oh, yeah, the more the merrier. But she doesn't really want Lisa to come sit. No. So Tony pulls out Lisa's chair, and he tells her she looks very pretty. And she sits down, he pushes her chair in, and then he walks right by Sam, <laughs> who's waiting for him to pull I out know. her chair. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, Sam. And then he pulls out her chair and sits her down. Sits her down. Now they cut back to these two idiots on the couch. <laughs> These two idiots on the end. They're they really fighting. Are. They're kicking each other's legs because they're trying to share the one blanket that's not big enough for the both of them. And then Mona's like, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And Gosh. Angela says, It's not like I deliberately got you sick. And Mona says, Maybe you did. Maybe you're doing this to get back at how I mistreated you your whole life. Mm. 
Yeah, maybe, Mona. Might be. Yeah. <laughs> Might be on something. <laughs> so Mona says, I'm leaving. And she grabs a blanket and starts leaving. And Angela says, that's my blanket. So she turns around and just chucks it back at Angela. And it's one blanket they have between right. both houses. Yes, no other blankets. Now Jonathan comes back downstairs again. He's all dressed to go out. She says, where are you going? And he says, well, Todd's dad got tickets to WrestleMania. So can I at least go do that? And she says, oh, all right, you know, just make sure you wear your mittens. And he says, they're not mittens, they're gloves. Mittens. <laughs> he's, he's all upset that she would think that he would still wear mittens. The only difference, the, mit, the mittens are the ones without the fingers, right? And gloves have yeah, all the fingers? Yeah, I think so, yeah. That is bizarre to think yeah. that a child would be in mittens, because don't they still need their fingers? Yeah, uh, I guess. I'm, I'm not used to cold weather. <laughs> I know, we don't know. <laughs> I know. And he's he sees that Angela's not doing well. And he's like, are you sure that you're going to be okay if I go out? And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. Go out, have a good time. But once he gets outside the front door, he can hear her hacking still from inside. Not good. Yeah. So he walks back inside, takes off his jacket, and decides he's going to stay home. And she says, "What? well, that was quick. What happened to WrestleMania? And he's like, oh, I changed my mind about going. So, And he asks her, can I get you some tea? And she's like, oh, that would be really great. And then she asks him to turn the heat on. So he goes over to the thermostat for the furnace, and he's kind of jiggling it around and stuff. And he's like, Mom, the furnace. And then he realizes she's laying down. And he's like, you know what? I'm not going to bother her with this. So he's like, oh, no, never mind. I got it. So the furnace isn't working, and Jonathan's going to try to figure it out himself. So yeah, now we're back luck. to dinner with Lisa and Sam and Tony. And they're asking, um, Lisa, how long have you been skiing? And she says, oh, since I was around Sam's age, 14 or 15. And Sam says, I'm 16. No idea. <laughs> it's just such a kid thing, you know? Like, every year counts when you're that young. So somehow Tony manages to get coffee on himself. I know. How did he do that? <laughs> I don't know exactly. First, I thought maybe somebody bumped into him, but it doesn't look like anyone bumps no, into him. I think he just spilled it on himself. Yeah. So he, he gets up and he... he poured he, it out of his <laughs> glass. Or it's his like a little... Right into his lap. A little plastic mug. So he gets up to go, I guess, try to wipe his pants off in the bathroom. And as he's walking to the restroom, Amber, the little girl from the bunny slope, is walking back towards us. And Amber. So she sees Tony's wet pants and she starts saying, I know what you did. I know what you did. Yeah. Coming back <laughs> at him. As if this grown man just urinated on himself. I know. <laughs> and That's he what she's says, Right. And he says, It's coffee. And she says, Yeah, right. And then again, he like goes for her. He's like, He's going to try to hit her. <laughs> and she I runs know. away. Once again, yeah. Tony tries to assault a child. Yes. Threatens to assault a child. And then he says, now I know what happened to Rosemary's baby. That reference I actually do get because I've seen that movie. Mm -hmm. So at the table, Lisa's talking to now just Samantha because Tony's gone. And she's like, oh, your dad is such a nice guy. And she's like, well, you know, maybe a little clumsy. And Sam's like, oh, yeah, but Angela says that's part of his charm. Mm. And she says, who's Angela? And Sam says, oh, the lady we live with. And Lisa, this is news to Lisa. Yep. Like, what do you mean the lady you live with? And she's like, oh, yeah, for the past five years. And um, Sam says that Angela is just like a mother to her, which is actually really cute for her to say, even though she's only saying it to get this lady out of here. But right. I do think she probably means that. Mostly. Oh, yeah, sure. So the lady's like, okay, well, then why isn't she here with you? And Sam's thinking, oh, oh would they like to take separate vacations? But she says, I really think you would like her because she's really sweet and really, um, really smart and really pretty. And that's the last we're going to see, Lisa. Yeah, that's it for Lisa. <laughs> now, back at the Bauer house, Jonathan's on the phone trying to see if Mr. Elliot will come out and fix the furnace right now. But he's like, next week? Mm. And then the guy hangs up on him. So he gets mad and he dials back. And then he's like, listen. Nobody hangs up on Jonathan Bauer. Right. And then he's like, hello? hello? Yeah. <laughs> then he dials again. Oh, he's, he's really pounding those yeah, little keys. It's intense with the phone number. And it's funny because you can tell he's hitting 555 because like that's what you had to hit back then. That was the universal all the, number. Uh, yeah, all the TV numbers were 555. So then he's like, all right, Elliot, you can't get rid of me that easily. I can tie up your line all night. I've got auto dial. 
But he really doesn't because no, he's just shown us phone. three times that he's dialed that. Right. <laughs> right. Not on that phone. <laughs> and he says, I've got no heat and two sick women here. One's 83 and the other one's a Vietnam vet. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Where's he get this stuff? <laughs> and then he's like, 20 minutes, make it 15. And Angela comes in and sees this display and thinks it's the cutest thing ever and kind of starts giggling to herself. So Jonathan hangs up the phone. He's feeling really proud. And she's like, wow, I've never been able to get Mr. Elliot over here any sooner than like a week. Wow. And she says, but I also have never tried the Vietnam angle. <laughs> <laughs> so Jonathan's like, do you need anything? Do you, you want your slippers? And Angela's like, no, I'll be fine. I'll wait up for Mr. Elliot. And Jonathan's like, no, listen, I can handle this. Like, you need to rest. You go to bed. I'm not a kid anymore. Let me do this. And she does. And she leaves yeah. the kitchen and lets him handle it. And then he's as she leaves, he says to her through the door, next time I'm going to New York City. <laughs> and she says, okay, just make sure you wear your mittens. I mean, your gloves. Back to the mittens. And he looks all proud. But, I mean, okay, a 13-year-old in New York City by themselves. Like, now, I don't know. I mean, I don't live in the city. So I'm sure... If you're in the city, obviously a 13-year-old would probably be able to get the, know their way around at a certain point. Sure. If you live outside the city, I don't know what age you, as a parent, your comfort level is with letting them go there. But I do know that living here in L.A., it's a big deal for, like, 12-year-olds to get dropped off at the mall. Yeah. But I, it, it is so different these days, you know? Like, I, kids just don't have the free reign that we did as kids. I know. They don't. Although there's no way in hell my mom would have let me go to New York City by myself when I was 13. She wouldn't even let me take my vacations by myself when I was 19. <laughs> let alone go to New York City by myself. Right. Tony comes back in the dining room to find Samantha sitting by herself and all of Lisa's stuff is gone. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what happened? Where did Lisa go? And Sam, oh, hi. Sam, hi, Kat. Hi. Sam says she left. She said she had an early class in the morning. And he's mm. like, well, she told me it was her day off. Did she say anything else? And Sam says, yeah, have a nice life. And he's like, oh, man, that's not good. So yeah, he sits he down. Yeah, thought he did something wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Sam's like, oh. spilling of the coffee. Yeah, maybe. She, that was too, too klutzy for her. And Sam says, yeah, you know, let's tomorrow. I was thinking tomorrow morning we can try the half dollar run. I don't know what that is, but maybe it's fun. I don't maybe either. It's I fun. don't know much about skiing. Yeah. And then he's, but he's still thinking about Lisa. And he's like, oh, maybe I overdid it with the vulnerability routine. But Sam's like, dad, listen, forget Lisa. And he's like, all right, all right. I'll forget Lisa. Why don't girls like me? Because <laughs> we have to remember too now, it's been a while since... Tony's been on a date. I know. Maybe he's starting to think he's he's losing his touch with women because it's been so long. And Sam says, "Listen, Dad, I'm going to tell you something, and I don't think you're going to like it. But Lisa didn't leave because of you; she left because of Angela." And then Tony starts looking around <laughs> like Angela's right, there. like where is she? <laughs> yeah. And she's like, "No, no, I, I told her about Angela, and I told her that you and Angela were very close." And he's like, "How close?" And she's like, very cl closer than close. So he's like, okay, well, why did you do that? Because you shouldn't have misled her. But Sam's like, ah, you just met this lady. It's not like you were in love. Mm. But Tony says, that's not the point. You know, I liked her and you kind of scared her away. And Sam says, well, you planned this weekend to spend time together. And I thought you wanted to spend time with me. And I want to spend time with you. So now Tony's all feeling good. Yeah. He's like, oh, I, you, that's what this is all about. Like, you just want to hang out with me and you were jealous. He says, you don't need as much space as you thought you did. And then he's like, yes, just admit it. I had you from the first fluff and nutter in the car. <laughs> fluff and nutter in the car. <laughs> and then he starts singing that song again. Um, I'll do anything for you. And she's like, oh, anything to make this stop. And she's like, okay, I admit it. I like spending time with my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> it is so... Funny funny to see um a teenager say daddy like when does that stop you know it's funny i heard avi she was in her room playing something and she was like mom and i said yeah and she goes i'm not talking to you no because <laughs> she's playing a game right and she goes if i'm calling for you you would know because i would say mommy because oh, i don't call mommy. you mom mm -hmm. 
But at some point, they're going to transition out of the mommy and the daddy, I think. And I don't know when that happens. I don't either. I feel like with Isla, it's going to happen soon. And she's only 11. Yeah. <laughs> I got it right this time. <laughs> yes, he did. Who's the boss will be back in a moment. Stick around. In the tag, Tony is dusting the mm. shelves over by like the kitchen door area that we don't really ever get a good look at. But here they are. And they do look pretty dusty. And he's, I don't know, he pret- I don't think there's actually a spider. He just pretends there's a spider. I know. So he calls Angela out. Spot. And she comes out there and he's like, look, Angela, there's a big, hairy, ugly spider and I'm so scared. And she's like, Tony, I've never seen you like so. And he says, vulnerable. She's like, yeah. And he's like, do you like it? And she says, no. <laughs> and then she smacks wherever the spider would be and then just goes back to her office. Oh, boy. Yeah. So he was trying that vulnerable bit on Angela and it didn't. she didn't like it at all. Because she, I, I mean, if Tony's not going to kill spiders around the house. I mean, she has to. Right. So she's not going to go for any of that. All right. And that is the end of the episode. So I think I go first with rating this time. Oh, do you? What? I said, oh, do you? I do, because I remember last week. I'm only going to give this one a 6.5. All right. Oh, you know what? What? I never mentioned who wrote this episode, did I? Oh, I don't think so. Okay, well, his name is Howard J. Smith, and this is not only his only Who's the Boss writing credit, it it is his only writing credit. So I don't know if maybe he worked in this show in some other capacity, although he's not listed on IMDb. But yeah, this is the only episode of television he's ever written. Oh, interesting. (laughs) Yes. Um, And you know, there's really... So, I don't know, I gave it a 6.5 because like, it has cute parts. And I do do like the Tony and Samantha kind of bonding part. But just nothing really happens. It's just sort of there. Right, I agree. agree. Yeah. Um, And it it did have a feel of someone who hadn't written for this show before. Mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, not terrible, but, yeah. Eh. And, I don't know, also, too, I like, I mean, I guess you have to have these episodes where you split up Tony and Angela, but they're always going to be better when the two of them are on screen together than apart. Okay. Anyway, that's all. Your turn. Okay. <laughs> I um I was thinking about it. No. I, I give it the same, like six and a half. Okay. I, um, I, although I thought it had a lot of potential splitting them up and going to Vermont made it all exciting. And then Angela was going to do her thing and, and, um, and Jonathan's in it a lot, which is good. And this part is kind of relevant. Uh, so I feel like it had a lot of potential. Y- you know what? I'm so, I should have mentioned that I do like the Jonathan parts in this yeah, episode. Yeah. Yeah. They're good. And he, yeah. it's, you know, makes sense. It doesn't feel like it's forced. Yeah. Um, it was cute character development with the mom and son and father and daughter. Now, granted, at his age, um, he would not have stayed back to help. He would have ran like hell out of that house. <laughs> but this is a TV show. So yes, what are you exactly. Do? He would have left, not yeah. caring about the mom being sick. Who is the boss around here? Me or my mother? Or maybe it's you. Um, I went with Angela as the oh, boss. Okay. Um, just because, just because really the thing between her and, um, her and Jonathan that was kind of going on there, um, you know, the fact that she finally stopped like treating him like a child and, 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 uh, you know, kind of realized he's kind of, he's growing up. Um, and also the fact that she got to, she kicked Mona out of the house and got the <laughs> blanket. <laughs> I think that made her the boss. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't have a, like a ton of reasons. I, I kind of had trouble with this episode picking a boss. So, um, I think you just helped me figure out mine though. Okay. Really? Yeah. Oh, all because right. originally I had Samantha. Okay. And I'm going to keep Samantha, but I'm yeah. going to add Jonathan and I'm going to oh. say the kids are the boss in this episode. Yeah. That's much better than what I would. I went out in left field there because I never even sometimes think about the kids. Yeah. Because mm. Sam, you know, she went on the vacation and then she kind of decided that she did want to spend time with him. And then right. when something came between her and Tony, she put an end to it. Yeah. <laughs> he got rid of Lisa. Yeah. So that she could spend time with um, him. And then Jonathan 
kind of became the man of the house at home and That's took true. care of Angela instead of her taking care of him and showing her that that's he wasn't true. a kid anymore. Yeah, that's a that's much better than what I want. Well, with. thank you, because you helped me there. <laughs> the least I could do. <laughs> I, with my terrible boss, I helped you. And Mona did nothing, as usual. Even though, you know, we tend to just think overall that Mona was the boss because she was always so outspoken, but yeah. Mona's pretty much high and helpless. I know, she really is. Just stay right. in your place. <laughs> so the next uh, episode we're going to cover is called First Date. And it is when Angela and Tony go out on their first date. I know. I'm date. excited about this one. Don't get too excited. Okay, never mind. Yeah. I'm not really excited about <laughs> you it. You might be disappointed. Um, okay, so you can reach us at Who's the Boss Podcast on Instagram or Who's the Boss Pod 1 on Twitter or on Facebook. Our page is called the Who's the Boss Podcast page. Or go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast, and there you can leave us a voice message. All right, we'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and give a big thumbs up and tell all your friends. And maybe you can tell your grandma, your mother, and your sister or brother. Maybe you have no siblings. Tell your dog and cats. Bye.